First things first, not a sponsored video. I know this is out of the ordinary and a lot of people may be thinking, well, Drew's making a Mint Mobile video, so clearly he was paid off or they partnered with him because me and Ryan Reynolds are super close. But no, the reason I don't talk about carriers too much on this channel is because I actually have done very little with my phone service the entire time I've had a phone. The very first time I got a phone number was back freshman year of high school. I had an iPhone 5, never owned a flip phone or anything like that. iPhone 5 was the first phone. My family had Verizon. I was adopted into the family plan. We had like eight gigabytes shared when I first signed up. Then once Verizon Unlimited came out, we signed up for that because back at my childhood home, there was no Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi was just trash, so we just hotspotted off our phones for all of our data. Did that for a while and pretty much just ended up reimbursing my parents for my access to their Verizon plan until just recently. You're probably wondering why I'm going into such detail with this, but it will hopefully make more sense as to why I picked Mint, so that's why you're getting a little bit of backstory. Either way, don't forget the intro. Here we go. Anyway, for the past few years, me and my wife have actually been reimbursing my family because they've been covering our unlimited data plans with Verizon, and it was pretty expensive. There were about six lines on our account, and that total bill was around $250 to give six people unlimited data, which coverage and speed and everything was good. It was just quite expensive, and recently, my parents moved out of that house that I grew up in. Very sad story there, but not important for today's video. Once they moved out of that house and are now living in a house that has Wi-Fi, and of course they have Wi-Fi at their jobs, that's when they started saying, hey, you know what? We've been doing this for a long time. I think all of the kids have now grown up into responsible adults. We don't all need to be on the same plan. There were a few times we tried to leave the family plan where me and my wife just became our own separate Verizon account, but every time we tried to do that, Verizon charged through the roof. Anytime you just wanted to have a plan with either one or two lines, it was astronomically more expensive than it was to just keep reimbursing my parents. That's why we had never done it until Mint came along, which a few family friends of ours had been using for a while and they said their experience was pretty good. So via word of mouth, we heard about it and we were somewhat interested in it because it involved a lot of prepaid plans. And usually when I hear that, I think of those little, you know, pop-up phone carriers that are sitting on the side of the freeway trying to get you to sign up by waving a sign that says free phone. I was like, yeah, okay, I don't need that. I only take the four major carriers seriously. All the other ones, I guess, are just dead to me. But but Verizon was quite expensive, and since my parents didn't need that unlimited data anymore because they had Wi-Fi wherever they were, that's when they decided to say, how much money can we save on our Verizon bill? So we tried to lower it for them as much as we possibly could, and that's where I think Verizon is not so good. So today's video is not just simply about Mint Mobile is the best, everyone should switch to Mint. I'm not going to tell you that, because there are certain use cases and certain people that need a certain amount of data and a certain amount of coverage where I personally think Verizon is well worth it for those people. But we were just starting to look at our lifestyles and realize that the amount of money we were paying for Verizon was way too much for what we were getting. So we took off unlimited data once mom and dad didn't need their phones for their only Wi-Fi anymore. And then between six lines, we all had to share two gigabytes of data. Not two gigs of data per line, six people were sharing two gigs of data. Of course, the coverage, you know, wasn't that bad. We still had unlimited talk and text, which is to be expected now, but we basically basically had to not use as much data as possible, otherwise we would get overage fees. So as soon as we realized that, and my parents were still paying like 140 bucks a month for that, we were like, okay, we don't need to keep doing that reimbursement thing anymore. Let's just find our own carrier. And we had been hearing about Mint. What really convinced us was Deadpool buying it. As soon as we saw that, I was like, that'd be kind of cool. I want to be on the Deadpool carrier, even if it sucks. So I personally did a lot of research on the carrier myself, which Mint Mobile is all about big sales savings when you pay for things in advance. This is something I actually like about prepaid plans more than originally I thought I did because typically any membership I have that I know I'm going to keep using for a prolonged period of time, I will almost always choose the annual option over the monthly option because a classic example is Apple Music. I know I'm going to keep using that. I know I'm going to keep paying for it for a long time. That's why I opted for the annual membership because you save a good couple of months worth of billing by switching to annual. It's just a one-time 
commitment and then you're good for the year. $100 I pay for Apple Music with the Apple card, so I even get some cash back on that, but then I've got basically all the music I need for an entire year and I don't have to think about it. I don't really love discussing the billing and services stuff, which is why I actually opt for annual plans so much and bringing that to the carrier game was actually really refreshing. So the deal they currently have going on, which they say is limited time, but it's been going on for several weeks now. Back when I signed up, it was available. It's still available right now. So I don't know if this is just how it is all the time. Maybe this is how they entice you, but basically no matter how much data you want for your first three months, it only costs $15 a month, which means that if you opt for their highest data plan, which is 12 gigabytes a month, over the course of three months, it ends up costing you 15 bucks a month, which is pretty decent considering it's unlimited talk and text. And some of you may use a ton of data. So 12 gigs may seem like not very much, but I think there's also a lot of people that have Wi-Fi at home. They have Wi-Fi at school or at work and cellular data is pretty much just used when they're out and about, maybe running some errands or just hanging out with friends. And what you do during those times dictate really how much data you consume. So I know personally some people in my life that love watching YouTube videos when they're on cellular all the time. So in that case, those things can rack up a lot of data. Whereas if you're like me, I live at home, obviously, and I also work from home, which means that I don't get out too much, sadly. I'm wearing sweatpants right now. And sometimes I film my video without pants entirely, but I'm getting off track. Basically what I'm trying to say is because we had switched to that super low Verizon two gigabyte plan, we were basically just using cellular data for very, very little things. I used it for looking up stuff on the web, maybe some light, you know, texts that aren't SMS texts. Of course, needed it for phone calls occasionally. Not that I use the phone too often, but still it was basically just don't listen to music or don't watch high resolution YouTube videos when you're on that plan because we're gonna go over our limit and then Verizon will cost us extra. So the reason I like the idea of switching to Mint was for one, there's actually no overage fees. So even if you go through that 12 gigs of data, they basically just down throttle it to very basic internet. The website says it's like 120 kilobytes per second, which is insanely slow, which basically means that it'll be useful for sending texts with Messenger once you run out of data. But I'm personally fine with that knowing that, okay, I can use my full data every month and I'm not gonna be charged extra for that. That's the important thing. You can also buy more gigs of data for that month if you happen to use them all up and you want more. It's not a great deal, honestly, on those extra gigs, but the option is there. Personally, I'm just a fan of use all the data you can until it's not there anymore. And then afterwards, you know, it'll just be slowed down to basically nothing. As long as you're not gonna be charging me extra because Google Photos was trying to back up memes in the background, then I'm happy. It's okay if you slow down my internet, just don't put overage charges on my bill, which is something Verizon's a big fan of. So that's what I signed up for was the three month plan with 12 gigs of data, which means that I paid 45 bucks for my one phone line. You can keep your old phone number, by the way, or you can opt for a brand new one, which is what I did. It's just easier that way because trying to find the account information and the billing passcode on the Verizon account was so complicated anyway. I didn't want to bother with any of that. So I just said, you know what? I'll start fresh, have a brand new phone number. And that cost me 45 bucks. So for $45 upfront, which on other carriers would basically grant you one phone, one month of unlimited data with Mint grants you three months of 12 gigs of data each month, which may seem like a good deal for some of you. And of course, unlimited calls and texts. And for those curious, they are piggybacking off of the T-Mobile network. So if you have T-Mobile and you're happy with your coverage, more than likely Mint Mobile is going to have coverage in all those same areas. If you don't have T-Mobile, then I would highly recommend having some type of backup plan in case the places you are going to regularly don't have great coverage with Mint Mobile. So don't just believe those stupid maps where they tell you, oh yeah, coverage is great here. Those are lying. Don't believe those. So I've had Mint Mobile for one week now, and I gotta say when it comes to coverage and data performance, it's sort of hit and miss. I won't lie to you. I have nothing financially to gain by lying to you. So there's literally no point for me to. There were certain areas I've been to that have had pretty decent coverage. I mean, not the roaring LTE speeds that I had with Verizon. So at a place like my house, which you don't get to know where it is, I would get between 30 and 40 megabits per second download and around 10 to 12 megabits upload, which honestly for what I do on my phone is perfectly fine. I'm not gonna try to say that it's just as fast as Verizon LTE was because honestly, back when I had Verizon LTE, even at this address, I was able to get like 150 down occasionally, like I talked about in my T-Mobile's 5G video. But the thing is I can still watch 1080p video on YouTube with my phone using that data. Not that I have to because I have Wi-Fi here, but my point is I can be out on about in places that don't have Wi-Fi and Mint does not slow down certain videos 
video resolutions like some carriers do. I've heard of some that say like it's unlimited data, but when you watch videos, they don't let it load at 1080 or 720p. It has to be like standard definition. They don't do any of that kind of down throttling. The struggle you're going to have with Mint is areas that may not have great coverage because there were definitely locations I've visited in the past week where the speed was really, really low, like under one megabit per second, which means basically unusable for watching videos. But that's the thing with my current lifestyle. Most of the time I'm using LTE, I'm either browsing Twitter, using Discord, checking email, looking up something online. There's a couple of instances where I want to watch a YouTube video, but honestly, any circumstance I'm in where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to sit down, watch a video on my phone, and I want it to be at high resolution. I'm typically at home where there's Wi-Fi in the first place, or I'm at someone else's house where they have Wi-Fi. But honestly, it's just going to vary from person to person. There's no way I can, in one video, explain to you guys all the places that have good coverage and the ones that don't. I'll just say that it felt like most of the time the speed was good enough for what I needed. I didn't do a speed test at every single latitude and longitude coordinate I visited, but like I said, there were a couple places where the speed was not great. It was still enough to send texts and browse the web real quick, but yeah, if you wanted a carrier that can ensure you're going to watch 1080p content on YouTube everywhere you go and there won't be any dead zones, yeah, I mean, no carrier is probably going to offer that, and it seems like they're not really interested in tackling that given they just want more 5G everywhere, but I was personally sick of Verizon because for one, their app is confusing, there's way too many passwords, they change their data plans constantly, it feels like every single week there's some new deal, there's some new thing, oh well actually there's the 5G unlimited plan, then there's unlimited plan plus, then there's unlimited unlimited plans, and the fact that there's so many different tiers to the unlimited category was just frustrating to me, and something about Mint's simplicity was very relaxing. Yeah, it kind of sucks that Mint does not have an unlimited plan, it would be kind of neat if they did, but I'm sure it has something to do with them being prepaid and they can't promise that much data to everyone since they're piggybacking off of T-Mobile's towers, but still, the fact that they kept things very simple and easy to understand was the main reason I wanted to switch to them because their app only has, you know, one password. You just make one and you're good. You don't need this billing pin and then you don't need a different password for every account and other carriers are always trying to get you to bundle as many different lines as you can under one name. I like the fact that Mint kept it so simple. It's just like, how many phones you got? One? Okay. Send him one SIM card. All right. It'll come through the mail. And the activation process was also really simple. I just take out my old SIM, put in the new one, go to Mint's website to activate the code they give you on the little card. And I had everything up and running in less than 10 minutes. It was very simple to switch my phone over. And I'm not even that smart of a tech guy. I mean, you guys have seen my videos, right? I get so much stuff wrong, but simply switching to a more simple carrier, even if it doesn't necessarily have the best coverage or unlimited data was just refreshing, especially since I live at home. But like I said earlier, it's not like I would recommend this to everyone. There's people I know that are on the go so much that they need tons and tons of data consumed via cellular all the time. Or there's people that like to have cellular on their Apple Watch, which sadly Mint does not support. So that could be a big deterrent for people. Personally, I do not use cellular on my watch, so that was not worth paying for me. And the fact that I'm getting 12 gigs of data for the next three months and then after that deal ends, you can choose to pay for another three months or you can pay for six months or Mint maxes out at a 12 month billing cycle, which I'm a fan of because personally, I hate talking about this type of here's how much data you get, here's how much it costs per month, blah, 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 here's how the billing works and all that. It's just kind of frustrating and I personally feel like all carriers, all internet companies are just kind of annoying and I hate dealing with them. So the fact that 12 months means that I pay one time up front and then I'm good for an entire year. I got my cell service paid for. It's working. I don't have to worry about overage costs. I know exactly what I'm getting into. That's just freeing in a lot of ways, especially given since my data usage is so low, I'm just going to go ahead and opt for the three gigabyte plan. I know that's not a lot. Everybody's going to freak out, but you got to remember when I'm not working, I'm here. When I'm working, I'm here. So when I'm not at my house, I'm basically like, you know, running errands and hanging out at the DMV because I have to do that all the time. Getting groceries or just going to a restaurant to meet up with friends and family and that kind of thing. So basically all the circumstances where I'm not at the house, I'm not like sitting on my phone watching videos all the time. Maybe if I was a bachelor or a high school student, I would just spend long periods of time out of the house watching a bunch of HD content, but I'm not. So I'm not going to pay for data that allows me to do things that I'm not going to do. And I think it's probably just good for some of you to be aware of your options. A lot of you are probably paying a lot more than 15 bucks a month for your data plan, but really take a look at what your data usage is. How often do you actually utilize those speeds and utilize that coverage? And how often are you using
using LTE in situations where you could probably just connect to public Wi-Fi anyway, maybe that's an inconvenience for you, so it's worth the money, and I won't argue with that. But there's definitely a ton of people in my personal life that have Wi-Fi where they work and at home, so they just realized that they were paying way too much for their data plans, and I've seen plenty of people been very happy with their Switch to Mint. It's allowed them to do everything they need to do on their phone and allow them to save large amounts of money by paying for the long haul because you just commit to a one-time payment a year and then you're good. Then you don't have to worry about it. I don't know. That just feels kind of nice to me. So no, I am not going to be switching back to Verizon anytime soon unless some big life change happens and it feels like I desperately need unlimited data everywhere I go. If you're a huge data user on mobile, I can understand why you would want to go with one of the major carriers, but honestly, all of them are so complicated and they make the passwords and bill numbers and pin numbers so weird and how often they have to request that just for you to change simple things with their overage fees. So I don't think Mint Mobile changes the expression of you get what you pay for, but honestly, how much do you really need? That's basically the question you should be asking going into Mint, and I've been very happy with it so far, so I'm going to continue using it, and if I end up having more problems with it in the future, I will definitely keep you guys posted. Anyway, thank you for sticking around for this very long video, but honestly, I don't do carrier topics too often, so let me know what prepaid carriers you guys would recommend or what carriers you need for your mobile data usage by hitting me up over on Twitter or joining our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.